Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of Watts Collection. Uh, today what I want to do is to talk about a company, a German, small German company called D. Dornbluth und Sunde. And I want to talk about uh, the sort of the, to me, which is the epitome of where they've come in terms of the movement. Now, the goal that they had uh, was they had a number of things, was to have a semi-18 uh, uh, BPH, or, or 18,000 semi-oscillations per hour, which is, the, of course, the correct way to do it. Uh, a Grusader screw balance with uh, Navarox one spring. Uh, Navarox is owned by uh, 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 Swatch, so it's used a lot. And it's a good one, too. It's a good spring. Uh, swan neck fine adjustment uh, at, on the on the uh, balance cock, the hand engraved balance cock, which is nice, solid three quarter plate. This is a very German thing, the three quarter plate. It, it really started with manufacturing it rather than being able to see the movement. Um, screwed gold uh, chatons. This is these little cups, and the screws go into the gold keep them from getting yucky. Uh, retracting ratchet, ratchet mechanism with large flat polished, large spring and click. Uh, double sunburst finish, uh, yellow gold hand uh, graving of manufacturing. This basically says who did it and it's got some gold underneath. Name and number of the registry book. Now, the thing about this is that uh, this particular watch, this Quintus uh, 2010.3 Craftswolf, has something in it that I think is very important for any mechanical watch, and that is they have a constant force mechanism. The the one they they have, and this is why I like this, is called the Geneva Stop Work. Uh, most people refer to it as a Maltese cross. Uh, mechanism and what it does is that if you look at that uh, little chart at the lower right there when you when you wind up your watch you have one um, a certain amount of power and then it runs out it it has a different amount of power and so between that you have a linear what's called a linear torque and what they try to do with the Geneva stop work is to sort of limit the watch's movement uh, in in the the, the uh, parameters of that uh, linear torque. Now this also has a this particular movement. It wasn't in the, the list I had, but it also has double barrels, and the double barrels uh, they're set in serial so that the the amount that you cut off at the front and the amount that you cut off on the back using the Geneva stop work of the Maltese cross is, you know, so you don't have just a little bitty left after you finish. I think it's roughly, it's almost like the first 20% and the last 20%, which only gives you about 60% of where you have this linear torque. Uh, so anyway, th so to me, this was really very, very interesting. And on the, uh, on the back of uh, the back of the movement, you can see the Maltese cross. I tried to put a little arrow, and then I have an enlargement of it. And the way it works is that you have uh, two elements. You have one called the finger. It's a little thing that spins around. And then you have the Maltese cross. And if you, the uh, picture at the bottom is another, another uh, view of the same thing. The, uh, the finger is is moved by the power of the, the mainspring. And what it does, it turns the Maltese cross uh, using the little, it's got a round thing, and then the little finger thing uh, clicks. I'm gonna show you sort of a, <laughs> an attempt I had to show how that works. And uh, so the, the reason that this is important to me so many, even good watchmakers, really haven't put anything in their movements that really address uh, the whole issue of constant force. I mean, there are different ways to do it. Uh, uh, this one has a double hairspring 
Uh, and so one goes one way and one goes the other. So your the shaft of your hairspring uh, doesn't go all over the place. Uh, and F.P. Jorn, uh, Chronomat Surveying, CS, has a double barrel in parallel. And so you have two barrels that are working together simultaneously. The one in this one is serial, which means that one works and then the other one works, which will give you a longer uh, run in it. So the first thing I want to do is, and it's <laughs> not the most uh, good, not the best audio visual, but uh, sort of a homemade thing I did. So let's take a look at it real quick. In order to see how the Maltese cross, or what is actually called the Geneva stop, stop work mechanism, this piece right here is the is the, the Maltese cross part. And you have one, two, three, four of the arms on the on the cross have this little curvature like this, and one doesn't. When it hits this this one right here, it stops. Now the way it works is like this. We'll start off here, and the this sort of sits there, and what happens is that as this comes around, it moves it, and then this part here just stays because it has the same curve as this uh, this other uh, part of it. The we'll call it the hammer, I guess. And what it does is that when it comes in here, it will. Uh, Sort of hard to move this like this, and then this will go smoothly against here, and then it'll go around again and move this. But when it hits here, you can see how this part goes up like this, and this will stop it. Now, you have two ways for this to go when you're winding it, it'll go one way and stop when it reaches the point where the you're going to have a fall off in the amount of torque you have and then it'll go the other way when it's unwinding okay and so the same thing will happen and this keeps going like this around here like this and moving that and this is smooth Oops, and like this, oops, and finally comes to the one that goes outward like this, and that'll stop it. Okay, um, now in looking at the list of things that um, they had, that Dornbluth had for what they wanted in a movement, uh, and then we look at this movement. I, I call it the caliber 2010.3. Uh, they had, I wasn't sure whether that was the name of the watch, the name of the caliber, or, or what. It was, some of their naming things weren't quite clear on this particular watch. The one that, uh, the one that we looked at initially, which is the Quintus 2010.3. Uh, but looking at the movement for it, we can see all of those, the things that they wanted to do. And we can see all of these things. You can see the there's the uh, 18,000 SOH, semi-oscillation per hour. The And then you can see the uh, swan neck um, regulator, hand engraved balance cock, the three-quarter plate, uh, the gold chantons around those four uh, rubies. Well, you see the four rubies there. And... Uh, and then you have a, I don't know, the the uh, the crown wheels. They, uh, I usually refer to that as snailing when it has that. They refer to it as a sunburst. That's okay. Uh, and then you can see the retracting ratchet uh, and the click uh, along the top uh, line of it. And then that goes into the Maltese cross. Uh, and if you follow their four gears, the main, the crown gears, and it goes into a little in-between gear that turns the gear that turns the finger um, 
I guess you call it a finger wheel, uh, that turns the Maltese cross to the point until the Maltese cross uh, stops it. So anyway, uh, let me say this about them. I, I really think that they've come a long way, and I think they're really, it, it's one of the, I think one of the really good buys in uh, German watches right now. A few years ago, I looked at them, and, and at the time, they seemed to be developing. Uh, they didn't seem to really have their own movement, but they wanted one. And I think that the one that they have in this particular one is really worth looking at. Anyway, let me know what you think. And uh, if I got several things or a few things wrong, let me know. And uh, until next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the art and science of Watts Collection.